What's up guys, Mandrick here with a demonstrational video. This one I am not doing scripted at all. I am just going to be going through this tool that I have discovered off of, well, honestly kind of a self-advertising post on Reddit. So this tool, Crocotile 3D, recently updated itself to allow it to export to a format native to Godot, the GLTF format. This one is a open standard that the Kronos group is using and is one that is highly recommended to use. So I'm going to be demonstrating this tool, how to use it in Godot and my thoughts on it. So the first thing I'm going to do is import a tile set. This tile set that I'll be using came from Perpetual Diversion. They create some art on itch.io and the Unity Asset Store. So this is a 2D tile set that they made. So Let's, let's create a little bit of a tile set. So what Crocotile 3D is, is a tool that can use 2D tile sets, much like you'd see in RPG Maker, and you can create tile sets with it. Granted, so far it just looks like one thing you just kind of rotate around, almost like Mode 7 in Super Nintendo, but there's more. So let's say I wanted to add a tree. So I would just click on this tree right here. Normally you'd add the tree right there, but if you pan it down, you can place the tree really wherever you want. Let's change the snapping to the tile size and let's place a little, a little happy tree back there. And let's place another one right there. So as you can see, I placed two trees. And if you're going to tell the Z depth is a little different. That's because if you see this white crosshair that the tree is riding along right now, that is the axis that the tree is placed on. And you can move it the WASD keys. Right now I'm holding space and to move it front and back. And you're easily able to change where these trees are placed. Voila, a bunch of trees. Now they're flat right now. There are more advanced 3D modeling features within here that allow you to make that less flat. Actually, speaking of which, let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and move the plane right there. All right. So we just placed a tree, right? Let's say we wanted to go in here and make it a little bit more, give it a little bit of depth, shall we? So they have the placement mode and then editing mode. In editing mode, you're able to select faces and whatever else. So. We just place this tree. Let's go ahead and trim off the extra edges. Put there Alt S. As you drag the cursor along the edges in here, you'll see a yellow line. This yellow line is, is what it's allowing us to trim this face. So it's kind of hard to see, but I've got pure alpha on the sides I just remove them now for some reason it's not letting me quite get to the top but that's that's fine uh, this isn't to be super detailed anyway I'm just trying to be show a demonstration of using this tool oh, that's pr actually probably this tile splitting feature right here would you look at that that's exactly what it was see I still haven't learned the tool fully yet I'm getting used to everything, but I figured I'd showcase this tool anyway. So I trimmed this tree to be exactly where it needs to be. However, there's still some extra alpha down here we can get rid of. So to do that, we're going to have to go in and isolate it even further. However, let's go and do this in a faster way. If we can go to faces here and subdivide this face. So let's say we want Let's go with seven columns and 10 rows. So as you can see, it placed a bunch of vertices all over this, or all over this thing. Let's then deselect them all and remove all the tiles that only contain alpha. Uh, does that contain a shadow pixel? It looks like it. Delete those, we don't need them. All right, so let's go ahead and get a little bit closer here. I can't zoom in any further. There we go. All right, can we just 
delete that and leave the triangle. Where does see? No, it doesn't look like I can. But what I can probably do. Decrease this down to two just to make this a little faster. One. Seems like that's a partial pixel. So one feature that I haven't seen yet in this tool that I really wish it had is kind of like a, a merge feature so I can just quickly and easily merge that vertex with this vertex. Like there's just no functionality for that. I'm just gonna undo all that. Yeah, this vertex is fine. All right, back to the showcase. I got this tree with all these vertices, right? And I want to give this thing a little bit of depth. So it's going to take the trunk here at these faces and split them down the middle. Split, split, split. And you see that created some more vertices in the middle there. Just do the same thing here. Split. All right. Now I can go and deselect all these faces, select these vertices, and bring them forward. And I can select these vertices. Let's not select that one. Bring them a little bit for forward. Deselect. And that's going to bring that bottom one out just a little bit more. And that trunk has just a little bit of depth. Now let's go ahead and work on... Sorry, I'm, I'm not very good at the controls quite yet. I'm working on it. <laughs> ah, used to using the Godot camera controls. All right, so let's actually see select everything. Just make sure I don't have any randomly selected. Just gonna select all these within the tree. Move it out a little. Deselect, let's select all these within the tree here. Move it out a little. Deselect, move, select all these. And what we have now is it's coming along to be a pretty happy looking tree, don't you think? With a little bit of depth. I mean, I, I'm, I'll be honest, I'm not even close to, I'm not even going to try to claim that I'm skilled at this. I'm just showing a new tool that I found that I think other game devs should be aware of. All right. Now our tree has just a little bit of depth. Let's go ahead and out that one too, just a little bit. And we can even pull some of these back. We don't really need to pull them forward. And pulling back some of these alpha ones too would be a great way to kind of give the tree a little bit of a curve. Okay, that's not a good one to pull back, but gonna do this one too let's go and pull these two out just a little bit further there we go There, so now we have a tree that has a little bit of depth to it. So, what I can do now, select it all, I have to do faces. 
There has to be an easy, a quick and easy way to select all their faces. Vertices select. Nope. There has to be an easy select faces option. I'm just not. There it is. If you hold shift and drag it along, you can select the whole tree. Faces, then you can create an object. This object is added to scenes right here. Let's go ahead and name it tree. I can delete that and we can even go in here and delete these trees in here that I did place earlier. What I was doing there is anytime you click a vertex, you may have noticed it realigns your placement axis. So to an easy way to go back to where you were is just click an already placed vertice. Now, if I click, click on tree and go to edit mode, you can place this tree and it looks like I put it on the wrong axis. I don't. The origin is still off, but we can overcome that issue. There we go. Now, I go and change that to 32. I'm able to place those trees again. This time, I am now placing them. with some dimension. This would be an excellent option for a game with a fixed perspective. Kind of like a camera facing, I don't know, kind of like that direction. You have the little character running around down here. Maybe even slightly rotated. Give the player options to kind of move the camera around this way. Or they can even, you can even have the tree, um, tree be billboarded. Let's go ahead and test that setting out. I don't expect it to look the greatest, however. Yeah, look at that. You can even billboard these trees. I'd probably remove that little shadow right there from the sprite artwork and handle shadows in engine, maybe. But that is certainly an option. It's going to turn billboarding off. So, let's go and continue working on this grass, shall we? Let's go and reaccess that up. 16 is fine. Let's. Let's go ahead and just kind of close it off a little bit now to be to be fair for any forms of criticisms this tile set is not really meant for this kind of workload so if anything looks odd it is what it is all right so there is the little scene we made it's going to Deselect. Let's go and get rid of that object, that tree there. We don't need it. And let's go and export this scene, shall we? So export scene. GLTF is the format that Godot prefers. And let's go and make sure the tree, all the trees are exported with this. Merge the vertices, embed textures, and export all textures and materials. So something to note with Godot is that currently, as far as I can tell, tile spacing and use power of two textures does not work. It'll break the export. I don't know why I've messaged the developer on this. However, it's not that big a deal for Godot usage. So now we can export and let's go and export this directly into the Godot demo that I am preparing. So, I am preparing 
a demo for this, so create an exit. Go back into Croco Tile and export this as demo scene. Now we can go into Godot. And you'll see that demo scene is right there. It's going to make a folder for it because, you, well, you'll see why. Dim art. Make a folder specifically for demo scene. So when it comes to modifying the materials and all that, I've noticed it's a lot easier if we set the import settings so that the mesh is stores it in a .mesh file because and do a new 3D scene. Let's drag the mesh file in. And it's going to center that up. It uses bilinear filtering by default. And for this style of game, I don't think that's necessarily what we want to go for. So if we go to mesh here, we can actually save the material updates. Whereas if we keep it in there, we cannot save that. So let's go to surface one our material albedo texture so this is the texture that was Im embedded to the file it's going to turn off filter and turn on and anisotropic and i like doing compress lossless to save some vram and let's go ahead and save this scene so base scene let's go ahead and add a little camera in there All right. Let's bring this camera up. So when I'm messing with a camera, I like having another perspective showing the live view of that camera, just so I know what to expect. But as you can tell, this actually looks really good. So let's go ahead and demo this scene. And there you have it. There is a scene loaded into Godot using Crocotile. It was really easy to use and it looks really good in my opinion. I purchased this version of Crocotile on Steam for $20, which for a tool like this, I, I, I'm actually really happy for. I'm happy to pay that price. It's, I've certainly wasted more money on game development tools. So if we can go ahead and go to their page, I'm going to show you some of the things that people have, that they've made with this tool. It says there's full 3D scenes using a basic tile set. And it is very reminiscent of games you would see in the PS2 era. However, more modern. So we're able to get more stylized and consistent aesthetic that's more purposeful. And I'm honestly, I'm in love with it. I, I think I'm going to be messing with this for a little while. You can even make little 3D characters with it. Be a little creative, you can import that to Blender and then animate them. One thing that I am still going to try to discover how to use is if we have a water texture, can we animate the textures? I know in Godot... <laughs> I might have to write a little custom shader for that. However, how would I import that from Crocotile? I, I'll have to figure that out. But it, it, it's a really neat tool, and you can make some unique looking levels out of it. I'm looking forward to using it, and that is my showcase of Crocotile 3D. If I do use this more, I might make more content on this tool, on how to use certain features, and any updates that they might have in the future. This is Matrix signing out. Have a good one.